Schedule a free design consultation, and the more you buy, the more you'll save on blinds, shades, shutters, and more from Budget Blinds. Visit BudgetBlinds.com today. Lloydminster's closest ski hill is open for the season. Many have already hit the slopes, braving the cold temperatures for some exciting outdoor exercise. And as Jeremy Thompson reports, plans are in motion to help the hill season start earlier in the coming years. It's a beautiful day for hitting the slopes as skiers and boarders get their first runs in at Mount Joy. Blake Flora has been here both days of the opening weekend. His family has been coming to the hill for three generations. Uh, my grandfather um, started coming out in the, I want to say, late 70s. And then um, my dad, my aunt and my uncle started learning how to ski out here. And then um, I've been skiing out here ever since I could walk. It may seem a bit late in the winter for a ski hill to be opening, but without Mother Nature's help, making enough snow is difficult. This year we've had some pretty warm days in December, so that kind of hurt a bit. This is one of Mount Joy's two $18,000 snow cannons. At the moment they use them to cover the bottom half of the hill with snow, but they have plans to install a reservoir and a water line that runs to the top so they can cover the whole hill. Now they hope to have that project done in time for their 50th anniversary next year. The reservoir and water line will cost around $100,000. Because Mount Joy is operated by volunteers, all of that money will have to be fundraised. The corporate community in this area has been good to projects in the past. Just show that you have a good, good project, good idea and the support seems to be there. Vice President Ray Tatro hopes the new waterline will allow the ski hill to have a longer season. We feel very comfortable that, that this is going to succeed and it'll expand that, that period of uh, activity on our hill by a couple months. Back on the slopes, Blake is just happy to be skiing. It's a local hill, um, 20 minutes out of Lloyd, can't get any better. Jeremy Thompson, NewCap News. The Yamar Wayne Fire Department has received a much-needed vehicle upgrade. And for an emergency service, a more reliable response truck could not have come sooner. Graham McCann was there and has more. It is not far from exaggeration to say the Yamar Wayne Fire Department's old emergency response truck was falling apart. This was alarming to Fire Captain Morgan Wood, who ordered the station's brand new vehicle. It didn't make it to every call we tried to go to. Quite a few times it had to be towed. Uh, several times we had to get passer buyers to stop and help us carry our gear to the scene. It's really crucial that we get all this gear to our, to our scenes because I don't know if people know it or not, but ambulance doesn't carry all the gear that we have. We have the extrication tools that actually cut the car apart. The new truck is a 2015 Ford F650, and it came in at a cost of about $200,000. Well, we held out for a long time to wait and fundraise and, and not settle for something that wasn't adequate for our needs. Better quality lights. We have a better interior. It's actually our command post if we want to use it for fire scenes. and. It's got new air pack seats. It's a nice truck. Part of the money for the truck came from donations to the fire station as well as the county. They also won a contest last April from UFA, which put in $50,000. The fire station is currently getting used to the new vehicle and is in training. Recently, they had a practice night including help from the ambulance members. As for the old truck, it's not too certain what is to be done with it. It might be just put into storage. We might use it for parades. Graham McCann, NewCap News. In this week's edition of Retrospect, the topic is the city budget. Anna Kanotvich brings us a story of what the numbers looked like in 1990. Now, budget discussions have recently wrapped up here at City Hall, and the unapproved amounts for the mill rate will increase 7.4%. Let's head back 25 years ago and talk to Mayor Pat Gulak and see what the mill rate was back then and to see also what the budget looked like. Obviously, I'm, in, I'm pleased with it because I uh, partook in the discussions and uh, certainly uh, went along with the idea of cutting the mill rate. Yes, I'm very pleased. 
The mill rate has decreased by 0.42 of a mill, or by 0.87 percent, bringing last year's mill rate of 48.3 down to 47.88. Officials admit that it's not a large decrease, but that it certainly isn't an increase. Mayor Pat Gulak says it was a long process, but they managed to do it, and she's quite proud of the fact that all services will be maintained. But that doesn't mean that nothing was cut. Cuts have been made in spending, in transfer reserves, and in the engineering and transportation department. There's some programs that we had looked at doing this year. One of them was uh, starting to do some design work on Highway 16 East, doing some work on Highway 17 North, both of which involved uh, provincial money from Saskatchewan, and the budget in Saskatchewan doesn't look too good, so we thought, well, if they haven't got the money, certainly we can't do it on our own. So those were easy to scrap. There's no other uh, complimentary money to go with them. And then there's the Parks and Recreation Department. Although nothing has been cut, fees are being increased in a number of areas, including the Leisure Centre. Adults will have to pay 50 cents more to use the facility as of March 1st. And at least one alderman does not agree with this. Richard Starkey feels the centre is still in its introductory stage, and increasing fees will only alienate users. He feels that getting more people into the centre is a better way of going about it. Karina Fairbrother, Broadcast Centre News.